Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's video is going to be a bit different. We are going to be doing a product review, but this is also an upgrade to my personal gaming rig. We are going to be replacing my old air cooler with a 240mm AIO liquid cooler by Thermaltake called the TH240 with RGB. Since we are installing an RGB cooler, I figured I should add some cool RGB fans as well. So I also got the LL120s from Corsair. I got two sets of three to fill the case and replace the stock fans that the Thermaltake TH240 comes with. I am also going to be upgrading my GPU to this Asus Dual OC3070. Taking a look at my current bill, it's kind of a weird mishmash of parts. For the specs, I have an Intel i5-12600K, 32GB of 3600CL16 RAM by G-Skill, a Zotac OC3060Ti, and a 850W Corsair power supply. Currently cooling the system is the Vitro V5, which honestly is barely enough for my 12600K. We also have three front intake fans, but as you can tell, they don't really match the rest of the case because they are white and black. Up top, we have two 140mm Be Quiet Pier Wings, and then for the rear exhaust, it's the stock Corsair fan that came with the case. All of this sits inside the very popular Corsair 4000D Airflow. The build is looking a bit messy with a total of four different fan brands littered throughout the case, if you include the stock RGB v true fan. It obviously functions all the same, but it felt like about time I got fancy with it. To start, we need to disassemble everything and remove the fans. We have a bunch of fan splitters in the back, so we need to disconnect all of those. After that, we need to disconnect those splitters from the motherboard along with any other fans. Now we are going to remove the old fans from the case. I decided to start with the two Be Quiet fans at the top. After that, I moved on to the rear exhaust fan. And then lastly, we have the three front fans. Removing the dust filter in the front revealed that I really needed to give the case a good dusting. I didn't have any canned air around, so I decided to just wipe it off with paper towel. But just look at all the dust I wiped away. It's honestly incredible how fast dust accumulates. My computer honestly isn't even over a year old. After that, I finished removing the fans, which was easy enough. To give ourselves some room to install the new cooler, I decided to remove the RAM sticks and GPU. After that, we need to get rid of the old Vitru V5. You have to take off the fan first, otherwise we can't get to the screws underneath. But after that, removal was pretty easy. Although the old thermal paste I used was really stuck onto the cooler, so it took quite a bit of wiggling.
Now that the old cooler is removed, we need to clean off the old thermal paste, which I just wipe away with some paper towel and then do a deeper clean with some rubbing alcohol and Q-tips. Luckily, I didn't use the adhesive for the bracket attached to the back plate, making it a lot easier for me to remove. I decided to add the new bracket onto the back right away, and honestly, I don't really plan on replacing this cooler anytime soon, so I chose to use the adhesive this time just to keep it extra secure. Alright, now that the back plate is on, we need to add four standoffs and then I went and applied my thermal paste. I'm using some Thermal Grizzly Cryo Knot, but decided to use a different method of spreading out the paste that I haven't done before and cover the entire board making sure to have an even spread. I saw a few other YouTubers use this method rather than dropping a glop in the middle and it seemed to give them good results. Since the Thermal Grizzly tube came with an attachment for it, I figured it was the best time to try. I honestly feel like I might have used too much paste, but as most people would say, it's better to have a little too much than not enough. Now that the paste is nice and spread out, it's time to put the cooler on. Honestly, it was extremely easy just to put on top of the standoffs and then screw into place. Much easier than any air cooler I've ever installed. When screwing in coolers like this, I have a method of slightly screwing in each corner a bit at a time to avoid having one side bow up. Unfortunately, my camera died during this process, and since I didn't have a replacement battery, I had to finish screwing in the radiator and hooking up the new fans off camera. But honestly, just play how I removed each fan in reverse and you probably would get the picture. It installs the same way as it was removed. I did come back in the next day to show my process for cable management. As you can see with all the new fans and hub, it has turned into an absolute mess of cords. My main method is to try to find channels for the cords coming from each side of the case. The hard part is having this hub in the center of everything. I'm going to time lapse this process, but I'm honestly not extremely proud of the cable management I accomplished here. But usually this is something I can do a lot better and easier as I'm building. But since the PC was already put together and these are all add-ons, it ended up being still a big mess. Finally, now that that is all finished, let's take a look at the finished product.
I am really happy with the way this turned out. Everything looks amazing, and the cooler has brought down my 12600K temperatures drastically. I wish I would have ran some before and after tests, but it's probably obvious that the cheap Vitru V5 is just completely outclassed here. Thanks for watching this video. I know it was a little all over the place, but I just really wanted to show what an upgrade process would look like, and I hope it can help someone looking to do similar upgrades in the future. Can't wait to see you guys in another video. Thanks again.